daf is daf nun zayin. So we are learning about an argument between Rabbi and Rabbi Yisuf. Somebody who is mining a lost object until he finds the rightful owner. He's called a shomer aveda. And what is his status? Is his status like a shomer chinam? That means he's doing it for nothing as a favor. And therefore, he's only responsible for negligence. Or do we say, no, Rabbi Yisuf says he's a shomer sacher because he has the benefit. He's getting paid. How is he getting paid? That if he is busy organizing this particular object and a poor person comes along and is trying to collect his luck, you don't have to give him. So there's a benefit. Or because the Abishta mandated that you have to take care of that Veda, so you have a benefit, you're listening to what Hashem said. And therefore, for these two reasons, you consider Hashem Masach, which makes you responsible for Geneva and Aveda. So we're starting to ask a series of questions on either Rabbah or Rabbi Yasef. We already learned the first series. first one, now we're going to go and move on. We're on the Pnun Zayin Amad Aleph, and um, we are up to the Gemara here, <clears throat> Aseve, about 10 lines from the top of the page. Aceve will ask another question. It says the Braisel Oilam Huchayev. It says that you're always responsible if you found an object, you're responsible until you bring it back to the person's house. No, until then, you're responsible. Sounds like that my my oilam. What do you mean always? Lava fill of a base. You're responsible even while sitting in your house. If something happened to it while it's in your house, you're responsible. In other words, Shmamino, Kishem Sakadam, you're responsible. Negligence is not is not a word of responsible. That, that's that's more than possible. That you it's as if you cause a damage. Responsible means that things happen to it, you're responsible. Either got stolen or it got lost. So we see clearly from here that Rabbi Yasef is right, that a Shema Raveda is a Shema Sakha. Omelay, so Rabbi responds, Medina Lecha, I will concede to you the Balachim. When it comes to living animals, the Kivan the Noctilu Nigra, because the living animals like to be us, so they walk outside, right? That's an animal, they, they walk, they constantly walk around, they constantly move about. So therefore, they, Boyun Tirusa Yeserta, they need an extra watching. Um, <clears throat> even if no one's. I'm, Nigra means stepping and Brios means outside. They walk. Nigra is walking. So now I will concede to you, says Rabbi, that even though I hold generally a Shemer Aved is merely a Shemer Chinam, however, but if you're for an, if you're a Shemer Chinam on an animal, you need to be more cautious. Um, so now it's, so it's the way Rashi it seems like I will be made, you are Chayiv in, you are Chayiv in, um, Rabbi says, I agree, you'll be Chayiv on the Geneva of Aved by an animal. Even though you're only a shemechinim, so for example, if you if you found a watch, I'm only a shemechinim. We got stolen or lost. I'm, I'm exempt. But if it was an animal, I have to be more careful. I know the animal moves about, so I should therefore make sure it doesn't walk, it doesn't disappear, it doesn't get lost, or it doesn't get stolen. So therefore, I'm I'm uh, now. The question is whether you're responsible always for the animal. No, the rabbis might always, or only when it, it it walked away on its own. So therefore, you didn't do you take care of your precautions correctly. But anyway, so rabbi concedes by animals to rabbi Yisrael. This time, Ace Rabbi Rabbi now turns around and said, I have a question. It says in Pasik that Hoshe, you have to return it. Angli Elabe say return it to the person's house. Ligi Nasa talks about Aveda. You have to return a lost object. How, how do I know I can return it to put it in your garden or place a Chobasa? We have some kind of a Khurba house that's a dilapidated. Minai, how do you know that's considered I returned it? I'm a lame Tashivim. Mikomakim, return it as long as you return it. Now, what does it mean, Liginase Lechobase? What, what, what kind of garden are we talking about? What kind of Chobbe? Ile, Liginase, Hamish Tamere, you know, there's a fence around it, your garden, all the Chobbase, even though it's, a, it's an old track, but nevertheless, it, it's protected. Then, Haina Base, how is that any different than bringing it back to his house? Ella. <clears throat> Yeah, the, no, that's, yeah, but I need, why do I need a special pasuk to tell me that that's included? And why would I think otherwise? Elipshita, we're talking about a genosic garden. It wasn't guarded. But that's not protected. So now, now why would that be good enough? It's so easy to be stolen, so easy to get lost. Shmam, you know that my responsibility ended because I'm only a shemichinim. As long as I'm not negligent. I put it there, I'm no longer negligent. It does not support me because of Rabba. That a shemichinim is merely a shemichinim. Amalei Sabi Yisrael responds, no. We're talking about a protected garden. So you're going to, you're going to tell, ask me if it's a protected garden. Why do I need a special pastor to tell me that's a good, good returning? I'll tell you why. The casual of the base is the house. How come you know what we're talking about here? The loy beinah das bailim. That I don't need. If I steal something from somebody. I return it. I have to notify the owner. I just return it to you. If I return it to the guy's house, I have his knowledge. 
and then it gets lost or stolen, I'm still, I haven't returned it. It's not considered a hashava return until the owner is aware of it, so that they can do whatever they want with it, protect it. But when it comes to hashava, I've aided the is, if I just place it in your garden, I've concluded, I've gave it back. I've discharged my responsibility. And that's the Kiddush. Yeah, the Bible didn't know. You exactly. Even though, the yeah, makes no difference. I, I took something from his property, I put it back. 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 He never knew that it went, he never knew that it came back. Whatever. Yeah, you have to be. In fact, the famous story of the Bashem, the, you know, the guy took the money from his friend, uh, you know, another time. If somebody steals uh, something or you're a shamer, whatever it is, then you have to notify the Bailim, I return it to you. Um, How do I know that? Because it says, it says, so there's an extra word to tell you, as long as you return it, you will discharge your responsibility. So Rabbi Yisrael says, it could be a Shabbat Sachar. This is only, it's limited only to Hashavah's Aveda. Here, I never agreed to do this. I didn't do it voluntarily. The Torah mandate that I have to bring it back to the owner. So if I did, I did, I fulfilled my mitzvah. Now, of course, Abai is not going to let his teachers go by. Abai, it turned out interesting. He didn't pick a rabbi this time. He only picked on Abai. Abai says, Abai says, You wouldn't agree to Shemer Aveda ke Shemer Chinah Dami. You also would agree to rabbi that a Shemer Aveda is merely a Shemer Chinah. Now, it goes as follows. The law is that if, let's say, a Shemer Chinah um, says it was stolen or lost, he's exempt. So he has to go and swear that it was stolen. And when he swears that it was stolen, that was negligence, he's exempt. So his shavuah benefited him that it exonerated him from pain. Then it turned out to be that he was a liar. Two witnesses come along and say, what are you talking about? We saw the cow sit, still sitting in your barn. In other words, you yourself are the ganet. In other words, it's called a toy and tiny's ganet. He claimed that it was stolen. It turned out to be that he was the one who stole it. Nobody else. Then he has to pay careful. He has to pay double because he now became a ganet. He has to pay double. That's called a toy and tiny's ganet. When if he shechted it or he should, yes. Now, what happens if a shreimer socha, for example, says it was stolen? Since he didn't benefit, it turned out to be that he was a ganef. You don't pay anything. You know why? Because when he said it was stolen, it didn't help him because a shreimer socha is responsible for for stolen items. So since he didn't, the, the, the lie didn't help him in any way. Even turned out to be that he was a liar, but but nothing changed. So, Amr Abba said, "So now Abai to Rabbi Yisrael said, Rabbi Yisrael." You, um, you're going to have to concede that a shamer Aveda is a shamer Chinam. How do I know? Because somebody tines that it was stolen. I, he found an object and he says it was stolen. Is Mishalem Tashlumi Kefal? Turned out to be that he was a Ghana if he pays Kefal. When do you pay Kefal? It turned out to be a liar only if you benefited from this argument. That mean, and when do you benefit from the argument? Only if you're shamer Chinam. Because if you're shamer Sach and you say it was stolen, what did you gain? You still have to pay. Even if you, you were innocent and was stolen from you, you're the Shem Masacha, you need to pay. You're the Balabas for the animal. Even though you only pay Kedon, not too careful. But once you pay the Kedon, we don't punish. No, if you paid nothing by with the Shur, you paid nothing. So then by making the Shur, you are not, and you, you turn out to be, you swore false. So then we punish you that you have to now turn around and pay not just the, the, what you stole, but the careful. Say it's a knas, or if you say it's a moment, but nobody's no argument. Kafel is always a knas, and the pet can is always a moment. So if you swore false and he said it was stolen, and it benefited from that sure, then we make you pay not only the the, the cat and the thing, but also the kafel. But if if you gain nothing from that sure, because even let's say you say it was stolen, so what? You start to pay the principal back to the owner. So then it turned out to be you're the guy. That... <laughs> you're not gonna make you pay. You don't pay kafel without a cat. So, since it says by by a shame that I made, he tiny was stolen, turned out to be that it wasn't stolen. He has to pay double. What does that prove? That his status is like a shame of him, and therefore, when he said it was stolen, he was he was potter and turned out to be his lie. He has to pay double. So you, Rabbi Yechon, will agree because it, even though it's not made Rabbi Yechon, but you're not going to argue with Rabbi Yechon. These are going to be shame of careful. Why is he being careful? Can the boy you should only have to pay Kedan? You know, it's since he had to pay Kedan when he said, according to you, when he said it was stolen, you say the shame of which means he had to pay Kedan. Turn out to be the liar. There's no careful there. Says the Gemara. Oh, Malehocha, my skin. No. It's a shame of But sometimes a shame of if he says it was stolen, he is takapotan. And because he is potter, he gained by swearing. And then it turned out to be that he was a liar. That's why he paid careful. 
When when is there a case of a shame of Sachi? He says it was stolen that he's potter. We're talking about a case that he said it was armed bandits, and armed bandits is an onus. It doesn't fall under the category of a, of Geneva, because what can you do? How can you defend yourself? It was armed bandits, so this is an onus, and a shame of is part of an onus. So he lied. He lied about that. He said that was he, but he said it was stolen with armed bandits. It turned out to be that he was a liar, and because it turned out to be that he was a liar. He, he, that's why he punished, punished. But we got a real problem with that. And the problem is as follows. A ganav pays kefal, a gazan does not. We say that a, gaz, a ganav pays kefal because it's, it's terrible. You are hiding from people. What's a ganav? You're in the street, you're hiding from people. But you don't care, You don't hide from Hashem. A gazan is somebody who's scared of nobody. Not from Hashem, not from people. He's open. So if you're going to tell me this is talking about a case of a gazan mezuyim, and it turns out to be a lie, why is he paying kefal? A gazan doesn't pay kefal. Says he wanted Amalei Shabbai. Said to Rabbi, said Rabbi Yisus, least in Mizuin Gazlan is a Gazlan. Amalei, so he said, Shani Oimer. I say least in Mizuin, even the mitme me inchi Ganavu. It's an expression the Gemara. List in Mizuin. If he is hides from people, he's also considered a Gazlan. So you can have a list in Mizuin. On the one hand, a list in Mizuin is considered an Oynis. On the other hand, a list in Mizuin pays Kefal. The Gemara actually talks about a case where there's a guy out in the forest and he's so brazen that every sheep that he sees wandering about from the shepherds, he steals. And we say that if, that if he was, uh, because he's in the forest, he's sort of trying to hide. He's sort of trying to hide. And uh, so that's why, it, in, on the one hand, he's a gazelin, you know, it's an open. On the other hand, he's sort of uh, a little bit discreet, so therefore he pays capable. So we're going to use that as a general rule, Gazlin Mazuin. So on the one hand, he's a Gazlin, a Gazlin, uh, uh, sorry, Mazuin, so therefore it's an Oynis, and the, really the Shemus Acha, but he's partly because it's Listen Mazuin. On the other hand, he pays capable. Tayshir, he asked, why don't we just say simply? It was a Ganif, but let's say he hid it in the, he dug a hole in the ground. We're learning about him in Hamapka, the best place to, you know, Shlish Bakaki, you hide it in the ground, and then it was stolen. The only way you can steal it is somebody buried, you know, dug a tunnel. Uh, underneath and, and came out. So just say it's Geneva Bainus. Why do you have to come up with this whole thing list of Mazuin? So Tayshi wants to say that the whole Geneva, every Geneva is an Oynus, really. Aveda is, is really negligence. You lost something, that means you weren't careful. That borders on negligence. Not negligence, but borders on it. Geneva borders on Oynus because every time it's something stolen, that's really for all. It's out of my control. It's not 100% Oynus. Maybe you could have done another lock on the door. You could have been a bit more careful. But um, it's like an onus, almost. So therefore, <laughs> this case is, even if it's mamish an onus, a shame a has to pay. A big chiddush of tesis. Even if it's mamish an onus, you dug it in the ground, whatever it is, you still have to pay. That's when we have to come up with the system. Okay, so bottom line is, Rabbi Yishin defended himself, we're told, uh, I hold a shame of a shame of and he made a shavua. He said it was stolen in a way that he be part there. He says, listen to that's an onus. But a listen to still pays capable. And therefore, it's going to be a lie. It pays case. Says what Ace say. This now we're going to hone in on this particular aspect you just said. Listen, Mazuin, you pay case. Ace, the question. It says over there um, that uh, how do you know? There's a concept called a shreimer. We we'll learn how mafkid is not allowed to be shaleach yad. Shaleach yad means if the shreimer use the object that he's watching, they had no right to. For example, you have a because I'm, not, I'm just minding it. And I used it for myself. Then anything that happens afterwards, I'm responsible. Even if an onus happens, because I came sort of like a ganif, and therefore I'm responsible for everything else. So we know that when it comes to a shayma chinam. How do we know that it also applies to a shayma sacha? So we make a kabbal chinam. Ma the shayma chinam generally is exonerated from everything except negligence. And yet, if he was shaleach yad, if he used it for his own self without permission, he becomes like a ganif, and therefore he's responsible for anything that happens afterwards. So surely a shayma sacha that has many more responsibilities, surely if he uses it for himself, he's, he's a so Yomar is going to say now, I don't know if it's a good Kabbalah Chaymer. Shreyma Chinam has a Chumra over Shreyma Sach. And here we have a big argument in Yomar whether it's called a Chumra or not. And in the kitchen before we learn the Gemara, to understand it, a Shreyma Sacher, if let's say he was stolen, he has to pay back to the owner. How much? The principal. Whatever. That was $100, he pays $100. He'll never, he'll never pay double that because whatever. Even if it turned out to be that he stole it, he still only pays $100. If he got up there and he said, Oh, it was stolen, so I'm exempt. Turned out to be that he was a Ghana. Two, two witnesses come along and say, You were the Ghana. What happens then? He pays double. So a pays more than a Shemesach in a certain case. 
in the case where he toy and tie his ganav, he claimed that it was stolen. Turned out to be that he himself was a ganav and he swore false, he pays double. So Shay Mechinim has the Khumra over Shay Mesachar. So therefore, one opinion says that even though it hardly ever happens, but because there's a potential to pay double, Shay Mechinim has a Khumra over Shay Mesachar, there's no Kabu Khadim. And the other opinion says, no, 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 that the cannibal like Fila is much more Khumra, that Shay Mesachar every time has to pay the full price if it was stolen, is far more stringent than Shay Mechinim than the few instances where he himself became the Ganib that he paid double. So that's the Machlaikis. The fact that he could pay double is that a Khumra. Or the fact that uh, Shema Sacher always pays Keren is and the, those who say that Shema Sacher always pays Keren, they argue that a Shema Chinon paying double is not a Chumra in Shmira. You know why you're paying double? Because you swore false. So it's a din in Shavua. It's a, it's a din in Shavua, not a din in Shema. So as far as a Shema is concerned, they argue a Shema Chinon is far lighter, gets off from a far lighter than a Shema Sacher. I, a Shema Chinon, sometimes pay double. That's because he swore false. And for the swearing false, we make him pay double, like a class. For, for the swearing. Okay, so that's the argument. Now let's go back it's here. It's very uh, uncommon for such a thing to happen, isn't it? Isn't Probably, it? or who knows? Because if I trusted you, you think that like, we're friends. Loy no. So the bride says no. You want to make a kabul chayim if a shemichinim pays for shlichas yad using it for power permission, he's responsible for everything else. So surely shemizachon no. Imam le b'shemichinim, you know why he's a chumra? She came and shalom to shlomi kevul. Sometimes he paid double if he swore that it was stolen. Toim le b'shemizachon shein le b'shalom to kevul. Shemizachon never pays kevul. Now. So Rabbi it turns to Rabbi Yehuda says, "What do you mean not You just said that it's possible for Shemus Sacher to swear it was listed Mizuyan, armed bandits. Armed bandits makes him completely uh, his partner. Turned out to be that it was stolen. You're telling me that these armed bandits have the status of a ganif and you do pay double. So Shemus also pays double sometimes. What's he telling me that Shemus Chinim is strict to Shemus Sacher because Shemus Chinim pays double? Or Shemus Sacher also can pay double if he argues a listed Mizuyan." These are not the list of Mizuyan and Ganav. Well, according to you, Rabbi Yisav, you argue that what? If, if, if the Shem Sacher would have said it was armed bandits, so therefore I'm put. Turns out to be a liar. He's a Ganav. Nimsa b'Shem Sacher Mishal says Shlomi Kaifu. That comes out the Shem Sacher also pays Kaifu. But turning time to Mizuyan, if he if he argues with Mizuyan, Amale he said to him, Rabbi Yisav responds, Hachi Kama, you misunderstood the Brayse. Loy no. Im Amre b'Shem Mechinim Shekain Mishal and Tashlomi Kaifu. The whole Tanesa, he, uh, he, any, any kind of, any kind of Taina of Ganif, and it turned out to be a liar, whether he said it was armed bandits, whether he said they came in discreetly, and broke through the window, doesn't matter what he says. If he said it was stolen, he's potter. If it turned out to be a liar, he has to pay in all cases. It's so limited. There's only one possibility that he tied, now what? If it's a, a timeless Muslim. Okay, well, that's another question. It says, It says over there by a borrower that if he had an animal and broke its leg or it died and the owner wasn't with him, he has to pay. No, it was an inus. A shayel pays for an inus. All I know is that a shayel is high if it broke a leg or if it died. Gnev of nine. How do you know a shayel pays for Gnev of Aveda for stolen object or lost object? The trader doesn't say that all the trader says is that if you borrow something, you have so many responsibilities, including accidents. So I don't know if it's stolen, you have to pay. I'm going to make Kabu Chaim. Mother Shayma Sacher, who's exempt from accidents. She parted by Shwood of Amazing. He's exempt from accidents. Yet Chai Begnev of Aveda, a Shayma Sacher, a guy who gets paid for, for watching it, has to, is, um, what do you call it? Is responsible for stolen and lost object, but is exempt from, from accidents. So Shoyal, Shechayi, Bishur, Mesa, Shoyal is even more, has more responsibilities because he's borrowing and has full benefit of the object without paying a cent for it. So he has, he takes on more responsibilities. So surely, in addition, Shechayi, Bishur, Mesa, and then the Brayse concludes, V'zeu Kabo Chayme, She'en Yolot Shuba. This Kabo Chayme is ironclad, irrefutable. irrefutable. Now, but now we, we ask Rabbi Yisav, don't know if Abai is asking it, Dudik Moran was asking it. Yisav, if you can tell me, at least the Mizuyan is a Ganif, you tell me that at least the Mizuyan is considered a Ganif. Am I in Ochoa? So what do you tell me that there's no Chumra? There's no Chumra in Shema Sacher over Shoyal? I'll find you one. Ikal Mifrach. Ma'al is Shema Sacher that sometimes can pay Kaifel. A Shoyal will never pay Kaifel because no matter what a Shoyal says, he has to pay. So therefore, even if he lied, he said it was stolen. It turned out to be he was a ganav, so what? He already paid for it. There's no kefir. But our shame of if he would have said it was stolen by armed bandits, he would be potter. Turned out to be that he was the, the, the Bob Meister, the liar. So then he would have to pay kefir. 
So we see that Hashem Sacha has a chumra over Shail. So therefore, the whole Kabbalah Chaim has been undermined because there is a chumra in Hashem Sacha over Shail. And maybe that's why Hashem Sacha pays for Gneva and Veda. But Hashem is lighter. He never pays Kaifu ever. Therefore, he. Is... What's the chumra that if he gets caught flying, he pays Kaifu? Double. Hashem will never have the potential of paying double what you took. Yeah, you took an animal, it's worth $100, I've got to pay back to the $200. That's a condition, or is it a problem with lying? That's the machlek that we had to him We're following the, the, that opinion that says that a kaiful, um, even though it's only seldom, is, is more chumr than a keren, that you always pay that opinion. So a shayu has a chumr over, over a shayu. Malo shayu sacha, she came to shayu sacha, but ten times he he pays sometimes kaiful. Um, Malay, so he says this Bryce doesn't agree with that opinion. He holds this Bryce holds that can that the fact that a, that a shayl pays every time for never matter what he says is more hummer than a than a shayma sacher from time to time on occasion on rare occasion that he says it was armed bandits he ends up paying kafel. Let us say misayele, I have something to support him, and that is. That I'll, I'll prove you that a list of Mazuyan is actually a Ganif. It says, If I rent a potter from my friend, the Nigma was stolen. Okay, so Shimon rented Shimon rented a potter. Now, renting is a big machlekes because he actually is all the way around. The, 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 the Shemit is paying money to the, the, the owner. So there's a, there's a big argument on Meir Rabbi Huda. What's the status of, of, a, of a Seychel? A man said that a seichel has a status of a shemir chinam because I'm paying for it. So I have. So why should I pay, take extra responsibilities? The fact that I'm paying for it takes away my extra responsibility. If I got paid for taking care of the animal, I got to take care, take good care of it. <clears throat> if I borrow without even paying you for, I got to take even more care of it. But if you, but if I'm paying you for it, I don't take as much care for it. That's uh, one opinion. That's a mayor. If you just says no, that a seichel is the same thing as a shemir sacha. You're responsible for negligence. You're responsible for gnev of avega. So. So Shimon rented a, a part from his friend, and he was told, Omar Allah, Hare, and he said, you know what? I am not going to uh, swear that it was stolen. I don't swear. I'll pay you. I'm happy to pay you for the animal. Omar Allah, Hare, and Mishal, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you. The Arikach Nimsa Ganev, and then the Ganev was found. Who gets the money now? Shimon was honest. She was an honest person, and he rented a cow, and then, and right now we're going to assume, as Igmara says, that he has the same status as a Shemus Rach, but he's Chai for Gneva Veda. So you want me, it was stoned, you want me to reimburse you the $100 cow? You know what? Or swear that, it was, sorry, or uh, or swear. And he said, I'm happy not to swear, I'm going to pay you. Then they found the Ganev, and the Ganev has to pay double. Who gets that money? The the the, the, the Maskir or the Seicher, the one who rented? Gave it to the seichet. Now, then the obvious question is: If the seichet has the same din as a shema sach, in other words, yechai for gineva veda, so he had no choice. Anyway, he had to pay. So why? So why? Savrua, we thought Rabbi Yehuda, we thought like Rabbi Yehuda, the Amma seichet can eat a Umidikani, he says, as if he had a choice. What does the Mishnah say? You know, he said, I'm volunteering to pay you. I don't want to swear. And if he would swear, what would he gain? What would he gain if, if he has the same din as a shame of which means that he's high for Geneva Vaveda? Let's say he swears it was stolen. So he's left to pay. So must be that he would gain something. What would he gain? Oh, must be talking about he'll say it's armed bandits. It's armed bandits. And then he said, but you know, I, I could have parted myself, but I'm going to pay you. And then if it was caught, you're paying Kaifel, which proves, like Rabbi Yitzhi, that an armed bandit is like a Ganev, and he pays devil. Although, how do you understand this mission? Because he bought you could exempt himself. Hey, what are you talking about? The only time that he could have exonerated himself is by saying he was armed bandit. Uktani then said, but if the guy was found, I'm me sabr. Do you hold that Rabbi Huda does not say that he does not Do you hold like Rabbi Huda that he does not say that he does not do? Do you hold like Rabbi Huda? Maybe hold like a mayor. The um, you decided that has like a shem sacha. Therefore, you have this whole proof. Maybe this this mission here holds like a mayor that has a name of shem chinam. So if he would have sworn that it was stolen, he'd be potter. Not because of the mizuyin. A regular guy if he'd be potter, but he says, you know what, I'm, I'm taking out, I'm going to pay you for it. Therefore, the guy was found, this kaifu, nothing to listen to the Mazuyan, because we hold like the Shechinim. The Dilma Kramesh, 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 the
And because he has the same status as the Shemir Chinam, <laughs> therefore was stolen, it'll have been potter. If you were sworn, it'll have been potter. Or if you maintain that the author of this Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda, but you know there's there's, a, there's another opinion that swaps the names around and says Rabbi Yehuda is the one who says that it's a Shemir Chinam. And I may is the one who says, okay, the author is Rabbi Yehuda, but it's a Shemir Chinam. The bottom line is, we're not talking about list of here. We are talking about here. Um, the shamer is somebody. He's a shamer chinam, and he could have sworn that it was stolen. It would have been potter, but instead he is. He says, "I'll take. I'll pay you." And now he bought the rights. And if the gun has been found, he'll get the kefil. There's real kefil because there's a gun. Rabbi Zayda says, "I'll give you a better answer." Rabbi Zayda says, "We need shamer sach." What do you mean? I could have sworn. What would help the shvur here? This is what happened, and then and must be he he said it was an arm bandit. So the chayyim has arm bandits, and later the guy was caught. Why is it careful? You know why he was careful? Because it turned out to be he wasn't. It was a bab mice. He wasn't an arm bandit. It turned out to be he was not an arm bandit. He, in his mind, he was delusional. He got so scared he thought the guy was arm. It was a water gun. I don't know. It was not an armed bandit. Amar hachem has kinnim betoyin times in mezuzim v'nim to list him shayin mezuzim. Turned out he wasn't going. He wasn't armed at all. He had he had his fingers sticking in his pocket as if he was armed, but he wasn't armed. And therefore, it's a regular ganef, a regular and, and a regular ganef. You paid that. Says the gemara. He learned in the Mishnah enough for the Gina. If they, let's say the animal fell down from the top of the roof onto and the garden, the, the, your crop, your vegetation, they cushioned the animal's fall, and therefore the animal was sort of spared a lot of damages because of your crop. He has to pay, but what? Not the value of the crop, but Mishnah Mashin is what would be the value? A cheap, a cheap grain, like barley or something would have done the same thing, achieved the same thing. We're talking about over here is the animal, the impact, say it say it saved the animal from being hurt. If the animal, but if we're talking about a case where the animal it's you know fell off the roof and ate and ate the crop, even though it was an accident, I feel the martial is any much He pays nothing. Why? Because that's strange. That's you see, you should pay everything. Why nothing? He fell into the Shushan Nizik. So he said the mother wants to say, which is very hard to understand what the admin is. Remember, we had a case before where if I walk into somebody's uh, courtyard or garden, I bring my payrus there and I put it down there. I had no right to. I'm trespassing. The owner's animal comes in, eats my payrus, and as long as I got very sick or dies. The thing is that I am potter. Why am I potter? I brought in, I had no right to bring fruits there because the rab says, one thing if the animal slipped on my paris and it's my fault. But if the animal came and ate my paris, who asked the animal to eat my paris? That's what I have said. So we're going to think right now that the same logic is here as well. That if the animal, in the case is very different, but the animal came down, fell, it told me he fell, and, they, and, he, and he's trespassing, and if he ate the fruits, the animal doesn't have to pay because the owner of the animal will say, my animal shouldn't have eaten. Go talk to the animal. Leave me alone. Which is very different than the other case, and it's very hard to say. Moral several say it doesn't make sense, but what was the most harm in it? Why you expect that the animal should know the difference because this is the uncle's pet. Yeah, but but is, is that an excuse for, for, for the owner of the animal to say, My animal should have eaten, so leave me out of it? What's the whole idea of it? Every time the animal walks in there, they eat somewhere in someone else's property. So you say, Leave me out? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Rayma, Rab, the Tamay, right number thing, the Amar, Rab, how you lost, like Taiko. In the case of the guy trespassed, brought his fruits in, he doesn't have to pay if the animal died by eating it. The owner, the property, the animal died eating it because he shouldn't have eaten. So the same thing here. How many hachi hash? What are you comparing? Hey, madam, rab hasam haya la shalat he shouldn't have eaten it. Hey, chad is the key. Oh, the um, the owners, the owner of the property's animal got hurt from eating the fruits. The owner of the fruits who trespassed, right? no right to be there. Says, look, your animal shouldn't have eaten from my thing. I'm not responsible. Easy case where the animal got damaged, and you're coming out to claim for the owner of the fruits. The owner of the fruit says, you know, your animal should eat it. The mother lay mother to pay. The owner of the fruit say, let me shalom. I'm not paying. You shouldn't have eaten it. Or belazuki he acharini. If my animal goes and damages somebody else's crop. And you want to say that the owner of the animal should be part of the animal shouldn't have eaten the particularly should me yama. Where does that sort of come from? So what's taktib shot? So what's Rav saying here? Loyme boy come Rav, not not that Rav is saying that if the animal ate the fruits, you have to pay nothing. No, for sure you have to pay. Loyme boy achla the mishal mashanenis. There you pay the full amount, whatever whatever he ate, the hana that the animal had. Um, what do you call it? Avabat. 
Nechbeta, the animal fell down and, and it saved the animal, the, the, the cushion did. Ema, I would have thought, this is the Kiddush, I would have thought, Mavriach Ari Menichseh Chabedeh. We had this in a few Gemara's there, where I'm a Mavriach Ari, which means that if I go ahead and I protect your animals, I protect your animal, yes. I chase the lion away, was threatening your animals, I cannot come over to you and say to you, uh, reimburse me, reimburse me. So here also the the owner of the crop is saving the animal from being hurt. So he's a Mavrichari. So I would have thought, well, you're doing a mitzvah, you don't get paid for this. Why should the owner of the animal pay anything? And the benefit that he had from the by cushioning shouldn't pay all. Kamash belong. That's a chiddush. I was saying it that even though the guy is doing a mitzvah mavrichari, you have to pay. Why does he have to pay? Let him take his say to the owner of the garden, you're a mavrichari. Mavrichari is a medai to who. The more answer two things. When do we say Mavrich uh, Ari only Medaita? I saw your animals being threatened. I saw a lion coming, a wolf coming. So I went there and I hired help a little bit, you know, whether um, or I went and I spent my time there to help your animals out. It was a decision that I made to voluntarily do the mitzvah. So I can't go and charge you for it. Over here, I wasn't around. Your animal fell off the roof or from the Shusarabim onto my garden. So I I didn't I, I wasn't Michael anything. Like this, like Michael. I wasn't Michael anything. So of course you have to pay me. Number one, number two, high high level data. Here the guy didn't know about that your animal fell in, so why shouldn't you pay? Number two, inami mavri chadim and ischavei less sleep seder. Generally, there's no loss involved. High east sleep seder. Here there's a loss involved. You ruin my vegetation. Tayshiri brings us long, long tayshiri. Mavri chadim, even though of course the time he hired people, the tayshiri says what the Gemara is putting two together. Where is mavri chadim? Only two things. Where is the mavri chadim? You you cannot collect. Only that if you uh, you you were um, no you knew about it, involved. yeah. But if you did not know about it, it was only if you knew about it and there was no expense. If you knew about it, there's no there's no pseida, you cannot charge. You're doing a mitzvah. But if you don't have both factors, according to Jesus, if you don't have both factors, you're not a mavriy chadi, and you can actually ask for money. If you had no idea about it, you weren't meichel. Or there's a loss involved, you can also charge. Whatever it is, yes.